yes we have the best news of the day so obviously over the weekend um Bergheim happened right reopening reopening weekend everyone looked like they had a great time and whatnot from the clips i've seen online there was mad flipping instagram stories that you know i'm not going to show because i don't get people in trouble and stuff or people kind of recording indoors of course you can't see nothing um because they kind of cover up your camera but you still kind of get a vibe of what's happening on the dance floor and whatnot and it was great to kind of hear everyone whistling shouting getting really crazy because the thing that you have to realize when you go in there it's like obviously every area in the or every city major city in the world has their kind of premier clubs that people go to where everyone's usually having a flipping way of a time but that's probably one of the only mega clubs i've been to again mega clubs like places that i got maybe a thousand plus people where legitimately everybody's dancing and it's such a freaky feeling especially if you're from a hmm somewhat pretentious city like i'm from in london right where you really have to kind of seek out the right club nights the right nightclubs the right people to have like a really sick raving experience you can't just go into places blindly and have a great time it's just not going to happen even places like fabric which i'm kind of falling back in love with you can't just go in there randomly and expect to have a good and a great night you have to be sure on the night you choose what day it is what time you go who you go with all these things play a huge part in what you're gonna in what how much fun you're gonna have but Bergheim might be one of the only places i've been to where legitimately the doesn't matter where who you're going to see you can go in there blind which i've done a couple of times on purpose and you're just gonna have a crazy time and it's always electric to see to kind of walk in and see that many people dancing and flipping going crazy no one standing by the booth and trying to get DJ's attention just just got, just having their a whale of a time themselves i fucking love that shit so obviously seeing those videos and hearing people in the background screaming was absolutely sick to see um so i'm gonna quickly run through a few things because of course you know i'm obsessed with that place as you can tell with the amount of videos i've spoken about on my channel and stuff i've spoken about on my podcast it is what it is if this is not the kind of content you enjoy please fast forward because i'm going to be wanking over this for a while but before I go into some of the content pieces that I found online about it, I'm thinking, not really too sure when to go. Um, there's two options on the kind of docket. There's option one is to go the last weekend of the of the climax that they kind of announced now, which is I think starring Gerd and a few other people that are obviously going to be happy to see, or to go in the first weekend of the new month of like november so the following weekend what they'll probably announce that i'm guessing in the middle of the month around the 17th 18th fish it looks like they re they announced the new set of dates so i'm thinking of maybe doing that instead and then what i'm thinking of doing is instead of usually whenever i go whenever i've been to berlin i usually do like a full week i gotta do like a thursday to tuesday and then the tuesday to wind down you know kind of um wind down or come down from wherever i've been on but this time I'm thinking to maybe do like a Friday, Saturday, early morning, like Friday, early morning or Saturday, early morning, fly in, go straight there and then kind of maybe get a hotel room on the Sunday or something to sleep in or on the Monday to sleep in or whatever. Right. Do you know what I mean, but just go straight in from like the Saturday into there. Do you know what I mean, and not kind of spend because usually when I go on a Thursday, I kind of spend place my time in other places. I might go to Palomas. I might go to Club Division Air. I might go to Roses, that amazing bar in um, Kreutz, is it Kreutz bar or Kreutz bar? I don't forgot where it is, but it's a really cool bar. It's all red and shit. I might, I might go see some of my friends at the Dorf, right? There's all these places I go check out, but I'm thinking I might just go straight there. And then of course, maybe, of course, see, just see my friends at the Dorf instead and not go to all the other places like Same Heads and maybe 8mm bar that I'm a big fan of. So I don't know, I'm in two minds, I'm not really sure what to do. So if you've got any recommendations on where, if I should just maybe wait for the beginning of the month of, of November to go, or if I should book in that last day at the end of the month, which I think is like the 30th or whatever, let me know in the comments, I'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. But jumping on in, obviously first first things first the queues were absolutely insane i took a little video of it somebody uploaded it on their instagram account um the queue it, it looked nuts it looked legitimately like nutty 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 and this maybe is a good indication of just how great of a place it is that people after all this time again because you know the uk or london has been open for a while in terms of clubbing experiences so if you wanted to go and party you could have gone there were tons of illegal events happening all over europe for the most part especially in berlin there was tons of people doing parties and like abandoned flipping um what they call bomb shelters and shit and warehouse spaces people renting airbnbs there was things happening out there were obviously outdoor um open 
open air sorry events are happening but to some people to still have this appetite to queue at this level especially for the opening night knowing how chock block is going to be it just shows you you know how this place is on another level and just the dedication of people to go out at night in berlin it's just it's like no other in it i think i read, read a tweet this is my tweet here says something about max capacity at bergheim is probably anywhere between 1500 and 2000 depending on the day and judging by how strict they are at the door in general once it's four it's four and people tend to stay for hours and days so waiting and queue like this is pure dedication yeah because i think this picture if i'm not mistaken was taken when obviously this guy um m zapped um says the max capacity reach is still this queue so i'm assuming at this point the max capacity 1500 is already reached and people are just waiting for the one in one out thing so whoever leaves that's when they decide to let you in and most places in germany or in berlin specifically they're quite finicky and there's a lot of kind of um they don't like bending the rules so if they if if it says 1500 they're only going to let you in if two people leave do you know what i mean it might be for every two people at leave one person goes in it might be even that mad that's how kind of strict they are with those kind of things so you can only imagine how long people are waiting for and usually anyway in general fridays and the saturdays are especially nights are usually the worst times to go in terms of queuing because the queues are always crazy because beforehand the pandemic wise that's when everyone tourists like myself would go and fly in so if you were a bit smarter you would maybe wait until the morning but of course you didn't want to waste time and not be able to party so it's a it's a kind of two-edged sword if you stay in the queue for ages and wait for your turn to get in or you come later the night or later in the morning and then going that way like maybe maybe like an early sunday morning or maybe late sunday evening um yeah you know what i kind of mean like the, in that kind of way that's when maybe you can kind of get a chance to get in that way but jesus christ look at the queue look how people and again i think this is a video right yeah look how much people are in there and that's going all the way back to that's going like way far back the taxi rank they're spiraling around. I think I saw one that was bending around the corner. That is a hefty queue. And again, it's not single file, so that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. So yeah, big up that. Then of course on Instagram, a couple of people posted some great pictures. This chick here posted some really awesome ones. Um, U-F-O-K-K-R. And um, obviously pictures outside, the iconic picture standing outside the queue. That'll be me very soon. On the way there, I'm assuming this is a kind of um, QR code that you get um, when you have to register on online there. I guess that's for your to to basically account for you actually being there in the first place. And then you have to have your vaccination passport on your COVID app from wherever country you're from. And then what else is there to do? Obviously, your ID and something else but it's a really good video check out the Bergen I have Bergen I, the Bergen website is a cool little skip comedy skit they put together that kind of details what you need to bring when you're there um and then of course you've got the young lady there walking everyone likes a good walking feet thing you've got a wristband here um that everyone obviously collects and keeps with them I still got mine from February 2020 so you know I'm gonna about to do the same thing as well so no shame in my game there you've got pictures I think early morning or maybe on the way there coming back where you just you know bleary eyed and trying to just keep one foot in the other make sure that you get home you got of course the um the kind of requisite picture of you maybe waiting outside of your apartment for somebody to have the keys or maybe you just want to come down before you sneak back in and your parents don't realize you went outside anywhere and then she's got here a cheeky picture we don't obviously meant to have of you um taking the lens off and taking a picture of your bag inside the loo as you do whatever you need to do so some awesome pictures from that young lady moving on we've got a great picture of marcel deepman and ben clock standing outside the Bergheim too they were playing back to back that night so they were obviously over the moon about that and about being there hanging around being friends and stuff obviously as you can see ben clock and marcel deepman played at 10 so they played all the way until flipping that what that's that's saturday leading into sunday so they played all the way until close basically in the main room at burkine so yeah big up them man the caption's quite funny though together reunited they both live in the same city and it's the first time they've seen each other during the whole pandemic but you know i don't know standard djing shit in it i guess in that regard um that's when you know you're not really friends in it when you only bump into each other when you go outside again that's a clear indication that maybe the friendship isn't as deep as you think you got um roxy Moore, of course who played there too what time did she play she played there at 11 
Um, nice little set there as well as people are coming in. She played in the main with Bergheim, which she says she doesn't really do. The caption says, I too succumb to the classic DJ photo in front of the Big Daddy house. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think this is, on, honestly, if there's one thing that, I guess with stand-up comedians, right? Um, a lot of people, a lot of uh, a lot of the kind of chatter with other stand-up comedians is that they hate comedians who do that pose where they kind of take a picture of them from the back looking out onto the crowd with the thousands of people kind of screaming their name or the other one which is really cringe where you face the camera and kind of do that weird kind of soy boy face i mean no one likes that shit but if there's one place where you're meant to kind of take a picture and kind of soak in the moment it would be like a madison square garden um maybe the royal albert hall here in the uk and of course, if you're DJing, you know, the Bergheim and stuff, you're meant to take those pictures. Because again, you're not, you can't take anything else. You can't take a picture in a booth. You can't take a picture in a green room or whatever else you're going to be in there. So the one time where you can maybe say, oh my God, I'm so proud of myself of having this achievement because everyone's queued up outside to go inside. Even if you've got a guest to spot, you still have to queue. There is no special kind of place where you can kind of float in, in through the flipping roof or the flipping place, whatever it may be. You're still having to queue. Everyone's been there as a customer, as a fan. So for you to finally have the ability to maybe go and play there, play some records, it's going to be feeling amazing. It's going to feel so gratifying. So being able to stand in front and take that picture is cool because it's a timestamp. It's something to remember and say, wow, I remember that day. You know what I mean? All the memories come flooding back. I know when I look at my pictures, the same thing happens. So I don't think this is cringe. I think this is definitely one of them ones that should be allowed to take but i think the other ones again when you're like you know standing with a jesus pose you know carl cox style on the dj booth is a little bit like relax do you know what i mean relax you just play other people's songs you know they're important play the tunes and keep it moving but you know maybe i'm wrong here it continues to says as you know her caption says as you know i'm more of a uh, panorama bar regular i was a special it's, it was a special gig for me to play four hours of pounding techno that i want to celebrate here and um, thanks to all the fabulous ravers and the great friends present at this unique journey that was a big fun and welcome back nightlife you were missed that must have been nerve wracking right if you're used to playing panorama bar as a regular which is usually house disco indie pop whatever right indie dance whatever all that kind of stuff right new disco um itello all that good shit imagine then trying to pivot and play a real banging techno set for four hours and not just any techno set right a techno set that can make the Bergheim room rock and move because i'm assuming there are certain tracks that you play in some techno clubs that you can't play there because of just the, the sonics and the you know how it kind of reverberates around the room and how people react to it it's just certain factors that you have to kind of figure out how they work and you won't know that until you play there so when someone offers you an opportunity to do so you're not going to turn it down but you're also going to be super super nervous like, oh my god how am i gonna play that sort of thing but i guess that's what a great dj does isn't it you've always got that kind of set in the back of your head so i'm sure she probably had an idea of what she would play if that if chance ever did come about and then when it did come about you know what i mean everyone's kind of happy let's see if there's any reviews of people that were there yep someone said here you nailed it enjoyed it so much um that's in french i can't read that je oh, bravo je retrouve ami voir sa ambulance or that, i don't know what it says <laughs> you're on fire you're amazing someone says here yes love to see this da, 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 da. any more reviews so yeah everyone seemed to be really happy roxy more set there it looks like mi amor no more comments there. you nailed this hey, yeah nothing else right cool no more other comments from earlier on in the day 15 you nailed it you nailed it you nailed it but uh loads of emojis everyone seemed really happy about that so big up roxy more for doing her ting then you got a funny post here courtesy of hector oaks he played too and he made this post um which says no darkness no light we'll shout out light um is that so i say no darkness no darkness night no darkness night we'll shout out our light okay cool um courtesy of hector oaks he played too what time did he play double check here he played Berghain just before Roxy Moore. Oof, that's a tough one to follow, isn't it? First time playing in that big room, isn't it? And then after you, after you come Stingray. It's like Jesus Christ, throwing the deep end. This is it. Um, his caption says the following: One day around 29, 2009, I stepped from, I stepped for the very first time on the floor of the, this building this one day changed my life forever and i decided that i have to devote myself to the art of playing music for people to help them to know themselves to help them to be free like i felt this day you know hector's a bit you know this is the height of pretentiousness he can get a little bit wafty and you know all this sort of shit but i get it i get the sentiment when you do go there for the first time i think my first time i've been 2008 a year before that you do kind of come away with it thinking that you've kind of finally found your calling and you just want to kind of 
do everything in your power to get to the point where you're able to play in this kind of place. So I understand when you finally do get there, it must feel so overwhelming, but you know, yeah, it's a little bit cringe, but you continue. Um, I know that for many of us, this is just another club, but here I met every single people or the most people in my life outside of my family. Here I learned things that I would have never learned because of it and become a big part of who I am. You know the rest, meet you under the fucking strobe, like, okay, cool, Fred Perry, da da da, where people say push over the limit. Going to some strobes on 24th, mate. The deepest, darkest of the life. Duh, duh, duh. What do people say here? Yes, 100% similar emotions. Three hours of dancing. Music was like three years successful therapy. Thank you for the catharsis yesterday. Everyone seemed to have a good time. Good reviews on there. It looks like AGM. What else do people say here? The deepest, dark. Duh, duh, duh. Nothing more else was said here. Push over the limit. No one else said any more stuff about him. Goosebumps. Push a limit. Da, 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 da. Some Spanish words here from some fellow country people. I'm assuming. Bop bidi bop bidi bop. Nobody listens to techno. You know what that means. Um, but yeah, he had a good time. And then I think the last one here is, of course, the legend that is Steffi. She posted a picture of herself. Uh, can't wait to be back. In my favorite brief after so many months. I'm on. I'm on an eighteen. I'm on at eighteen hours. Let's go and remember. Let's make techno colorful again. So that was cool to see her there. And then of course she posted the aftermath of it, which is just thanks with the wristband. You know, nothing more needs to be said. Comments are going off. Love you. Great set. Hammer. That was amazing. You know, fire emojis, heart emojis, heart eyes emojis. People are just, yeah, this, you know, it's Steffi, man. You can't go wrong with her, innit? You know she's going to bring it. That one DJ I'd go to see blindly anywhere play. So, yeah, big up everybody that made that an absolute barnstorm on an event. It's got me pumped. It's got me hyped. I can't wait to go. I'm legitimately planning my trip to the finest details. Like I said, I'm not just sure whether I'm going to do the last month the last yeah the last weekend of the month which is this one here or even if, if i'd wait for the new program for november to come out no i'm not gonna wait actually i'm just gonna book it anyway i'll just do the f the following weekend so this is the last one of the month which is um saturday the 30th of october um Berkheim features baker Crescida, fatty mohan luke slater legend matrix man what do you want to see nanny h rod had and then panel but you got cynthia fka dot mf4a who i found courtesy of whore how you pronounce that flipping online radio show with in the bathroom he's six so i would like to see him go Anton, of course i'm a big fan of more ilian is awesome palms tracks you know that wild one and robin flugel nothing more needs to be said the album just came out recently too that was absolutely sick so i don't know whether or not it's this weekend the 30th of october or if it's the following one let's see what the plan is what goes forth but yeah the opening of Berghain look absolutely fantastic and i'm um, honestly can't wait to be back there very soon.